I want to see if Seafoam makes a difference regarding compression. Will it actually increase the compression or will it hurt the compression by cleaning up the cylinder walls and the, uh, the pistons, the piston and the, the valves. So what I have beside me is an edger that I bought about 25 years ago. And I have used this edger a lot. I used to have a lawn business when I was in college and I would use this every Saturday and um, sometimes weeknights quite a bit. So this engine has a lot of wear, it's 25 years old. So this will be the perfect um, machine to test on. Test on. Uh, I know there's a lot of carbon in this engine. I don't even want to bother taking the, uh, the engine apart to look at it because I can just look inside the spark plug hole and see that there's carbon in it. And uh, like I said, it's 25 years old, so we know there's a lot of carbon inside this engine. So what I want to do is run a quick compression test on it when it's cold, and then we're going to run a compression test on it um, after the seafoam when it's cold. So I'm going to go ahead and thread this in. Okay, we got a really good seal there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to record what the compression is with each pull. Okay, we're up to about 35 pounds pressure. Up to 70. Up to 80. Up to almost 90. Looks like we finally got to about 92.5. Okay, so I'm going to let the uh, pressure out. Okay, so I just finished running this engine for about 20 minutes. It's about as warm as it's going to get. So it's, it's a pretty hot engine, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the spark plug, and we're going to do a, a compression test. Again, I have not added seafoam yet. We're going to get a, a warm compression, see what we've got. Okay, this is the first pull. It looks like we're at about, um, looks like about four, a little over 50 pounds. The separate, second pull looks like we are up to about um, 80 pounds. And the third pull looks like we're right around 90. Fourth pull looks like we're about 96. Looks like we're right around 100 pounds pressure, so that's about as good as we're going to get. Okay, it's, uh, the engine's still warm. We did the compression test, so now I'm going to go ahead and, and run 8 ounces of seafoam through the engine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hot soak the engine for about 20 minutes and then start it back up. It's been about 20 minutes since I hot soaked the engine, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this thing to start. Okay, I just finished uh, running the engine after hot soaking it for about, uh, about uh, 10 minutes to get it nice and warm. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is take this apart. 
Looks like the piston's pretty much at top dead center. I'll try and get it a little bit very close. I'm going to put the spark plug back in to so hopefully um, allow any sort of steam or vapor to stay contained. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and um, remove the spark plug and try to remove some of the excess fluid. So this is probably going to go everywhere, but... Um, Alright, that should be pretty good. All right, I'm going to go outside and start this up and run it for a few minutes and then uh, run a test on it. Okay, the engine is still hot and we've just finished um, running it for about 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and run another compression test. This is the second compression test and this one is after hot soaking the engine, um, just dumping a whole bunch of sea foam into the, uh, into the spark plug hole. Alright, All right, the first pull got us up to about 65 pounds. Now we're up to 90 pounds on the second pull. We're up to 100 pounds. And looks like we're at about 105 pounds. Yep, looks like that's as high as we're gonna get, about 105 pounds of pressure. Okay, so it seems to me that it built, it built pressure a little bit faster than before. So the next test is going to be letting this engine cool and then seeing how it has, uh, see what kind of pressure it has when it's cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, drain off this pressure now. And um, actually it's going to take a while, so it'll be a while in order for this engine to reach um, room temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave everything connected and uh, we'll be back in a little bit to test out the, uh, the compression. Okay, so the engine has had a chance to cool off. It's totally cool, cool to the touch. So now what I'm going to do is pull on this about, uh, try to spin this over, engine over about five times and uh, run a compression test and see if there's any difference uh, before seafoam versus after seafoam with the uh, cold engine uh, compression test. Okay, that's at about 40 PSI. That's at about 80. Looks like that's about 95. And looks like it's a little over 100 pounds pressure. Okay, so the verdict is there. Um, it looks like the compression test did improve. So apparently, like I said before, this is a 25 year old uh, tool for me. I've been using it for many years. I've always taken good care of it, but I'm sure there was some carbon buildup. This uh, removal of carbon, I think around the rings and valves must have caused the compression to improve. This was a really fun video, but I am really excited about the next video. A lot of you have suggested we use water, so that's exactly what we're going to do on the next video. We're going to use water and we're going to compare sea foam to water, which one cleans the combustion chamber better. I would love to hear your comments. I'd love to, for us to take a vote and see how many people are voting for water and how many people are voting for sea foam. Also, do you think it's going to hurt the compression? We're going to test that out. Some of you have suggested that water will um, potentially cause harm to the uh, cylinder wall. So we're going to find out uh, the answer to that as well. But once again, thank you very much for watching the videos, and I hope you'll consider subscribing. Thank you.